Welcome everyone, you are listening to and perhaps watching Hot Sauce Sports. I'm your host, Pease Delores. Joining me as always is my confidant, my number one man, Terry Tan. One day I want to do like the Chris Collins where it slide, you know, like... <laughs> you just yeah, slide your laptop, stuff, yeah. Like... <laughs> there we go. But are you on a chair with wheels? Because that would help. Yeah, I am on a chair with wheels. So it's there you go. Like... There he is. Terry Tamsworth uh, joins us from his uh, home studio. Uh, Eagle is in the studio with me. How's it going, Eagle? Uh, I am not in a studio. I am in my nest. Please call mm, it as sorry, it is. Sorry, St- Eagle's a section of the studio is the nest, of course. Um, so, where I want to start the show, it just, it's just strange, but it's, it's kind of woven in through the, a lot of the other things we're going to be talking about. And it, it's kind of impossible to avoid with a lot of the content we saw over the weekend. Um it's 20 years since the attacks on 9-11. Um, I, I remember I was at home. I got a call from my grandmother, who at the time was in much better mental health now than she is now. She called me to tell me that um, the World Trade Center had been attacked, and she at the time thought it was a bomb. And I said, Grandma, you're watching a movie. Come on. Don't be ridiculous. And she says, well, yeah, turn on the TV. And I said, well, okay, what channel? She says, any channel. And at that point, I kind of figured out, oh, no, something might be happening. I turned around, of course, and the, the thing that we all thought was impossible at that time had happened. And I remember even at that time thinking, this is something that's going to change the way we all experience the rest of our lives. And and it it really, truly did work out to be that way. Um, my wife, interestingly, was living in the United States at the time, uh, but she was 11 years old at the time it happened. So very different experience from what most of us in this room <laughs> experienced. Eagle, you're kind of in between ages. I guess you were in high school? I was going to say, I was 12 years old in okay. grade 7. We had literally like, I think it was maybe our second, yeah, no, it was grade 8. It was grade 8 at that okay. time. And I remember being in homeroom because you were checking attendance and everything, and a teacher kind of like walked in, kind of like distressed, whispered something into our teacher's ear and walked out. And our teacher just turned to us and told us there has been attack in the U.S. on the World Trade Center and everything. And most of us barely knew what the World Trade Center was, yet alone where it was. That's crazy. I had had already (laughs) been to New York about 20 times by that point. I had been in the lobby of the World Trade Center. Like, it's, I guess that's why it had such a profound impact for me. Yeah. And and I remember, like, explaining, they were explaining, okay, a plane hit the tower and it collapsed and the whole thing. And... I was like, I was 12 years old. Like, I don't really get this in a, a good way, right? Like, okay, fine, whatever it is. And I remember drawing the picture of our school and a plane on top of it. And I was saying, we're next as a joke. And then I got home and turned on the you've TV. Always been, you always had a bad governor for content. Huh? Oh, yeah, straight up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I got home, turned on the TV and was like, oh, shit. Like, oh, shit. It wasn't an empty building. It people. was not yeah, an empty no. building. Like, this was fucked up shit, right? Like, okay. I, this is I bad. remember I remember I was in like a homeroom. It wasn't really homeroom. We called it back then, but it was it was homeroom and it you was You must have been late high school, right, Terry? Uh I was in like grade nine. Okay. I always thought like you, you and Eagle were a little further apart in age. My my bad. I'm thirty five this year. Yeah. I was in I'm I was, turning thirty three. It was my first year. year in university. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was my fir- it was my third year of high school. Your first year of university? How yeah. old are you? Thirty eight. I started young. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I started university young. Um, All right, well, yeah, audience, now you know our ages. Yeah. <laughs> Please do not try and I fill w- in like any like questionnaires to reverse engineer our <laughs> profiles on websites. I was in grade nine. I was at a school where it was like a lot of it was a small classes because I, I got kicked out of so many high schools before because I was a little mm. pest. So I was in, and he comes in Can't and see. I had no idea. I had no idea what the World Trade Center was, and I don't think anybody in my class did either. Uh, so he comes in. Our head teacher, his name is Felix. And he goes, uh, he's like, guys, the World Trade Center has just been hit. And we're like, nobody knew. We were like, okay. And then the, like, he's like, a plane flew into it to the point where like where nobody understood. And then he was trying to explain the, the severity of it. So then he put, he rolled the TV in and put the news on. Yeah, because this is a time before smart boards, before yeah. uh, smartphones and, and all that stuff, right? So he showed us the TV and he showed but us... how did like, he get the TV? Did he have to go book it in advance and the tech gave no. shit for not having it booked in the whole thing? No, like, that usually like was I said, happening. I'm, we had a we had a school small school it was like three classes so it was one TV for the whole floor you know and yeah. uh, so he went and he was also the head teacher so he went and took it and he rolled it in and showed it to us and so we understood a little bit more but like I understood it more as I got older the mm. only part that 
that I remember of of that was when the NFL season was going to start. And the, like, the way it started, they didn't take any days off. They just went into it, the United Nation, and then the Patriots were fixed to win the championship to promote patriotism. I think any NFL team winning promotes patriotism in general. No, no, but um, the Patriots winning? I guess. But wouldn't you do that for the Giants then? Uh, the Jets and it was, it was the same year at Tuck Rule. I'm telling you, the, the NFL wanted yeah. the Patriots That was win. the actual rule, though. <laughs> no, it but was they a stupid of, rule. No, but they made it up on the spot. No, 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 no. That was the rule. They changed it after that year because they're like, oh, no, this is bad. We need to change this rule. It's <laughs> terrible. Um, yeah, no, it's it, uh, honestly, again, uh, you know, for us, we know a lot of people's lives were undoubtedly affected because of it. Um, and we, I got to take off my shoes now when I fly. <laughs> you do, yeah, yeah, that's that, the only thing that really That's the only thing up. that changed, Eagle. Yeah, um, I would fly. Um, but yeah, so bullshit, and and also like I gotta buy water on the other side of the the it's nonsense. Uh, but anyway, um, I you know we obviously we like to keep it light, and it will be woven into some of the stories we tell today because it's related to a lot of things we saw over the weekend. Uh, but we will try to not uh, harp too much on it because, of course, this is a show that is largely based in sports and comedy and a release from all re- regular everyday things. So with that said, it's time to get to. The news. Ah, there is the news. I also, I also uh, put in a little pause every time I'm telling Eagle it's time for the news because he's got to cue in the uh, the music. And I'm never sure if he's ready or not, so I always take a random pause in the middle of the sentence, like, oh, I'm ready. it's time for the news, or it's time for the news. It's time <laughs> for the news. Um, so the NFL's back. I, I don't know why. Like, it was the, the schedule was relatively unaffected by COVID, right? Like, we got the NFL on time. It ended on time. It started on time. Why does it feel like last season was 100 years ago? Yeah. It's, it's really crazy, weird, like, huh? Everyone I spoke to was like, we're so happy football's back. <laughs> you know? I think it's because every sport that we watched last year during COVID mm-hmm. that tried to go full, it wasn't the same experience. And we were always waiting yeah. for like the full experience, right? Like we couldn't watch the tap. Like when I was watching the Cowboys and the Bucks, I sometimes like there'd be a on the on field camera and I would hear the Bucks fans and how crazy they are. Yeah. And I've never knew that Bucks fans were that crazy. I didn't think that they were not crazy like in a bad way, but like Well, they are know, they northern chance. Florida, so yeah. Yeah, I mean they're a little Florida man ish. But they had like chants. There was like there's one they were pewter they kept on saying pewter pride, pewter pride. But, like they kept on saying that for like a minute straight. And I was like, fuck, it must be sick to go to a Bucks game. But yeah, and, I don't want to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now realizing now realizing that last year there was no fans, yeah. you know, it kind of took away from the whole season. It wasn't a real season. So Brady didn't really win a Super Bowl. There's an asterisk. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah, I, I I think it also has to do with everyone was so busy watching sports since like like everything shut down like uh, yeah. COVID early time, and then from that point onwards there was just constant sports right because yeah. all the seasons were shifted. I, so I it remember, just felt like there was always something. And I remember this time at one we had point, two months of nothing. I remember at one point earlier this year I was like out of breath. I was like guys like I can't keep up. I'm I'm watching like I'm out of breath watching sports. Yeah we're, we're watching like the <laughs> NHL playoffs while watching the NBA playoffs while watching like the, the Masters that's going on at the same weekend <laughs> while watching MLB uh, wild card or whatever it was and just, yeah. And I'm gam- I'm gambling on the preakness without even watching the race. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's how you know. Um oh, Masters with no fans, like you know, it was just a it was a it was a mess. It was a whole yeah. mess that we all want to forget about it, and I think that's what it is. But so <laughs> then I ask another question I don't have the answer to. Uh the Jacksonville Jaguars lost and you know, some mixed results for rookie Trevor Lawrence. Why am I so happy Urban Meyer lost? I don't I, I I'm not that guy. <laughs> I, I genuinely hope for success for people in general because you know what? The people, right? But when I saw him losing and getting angry, and I was just like, oh, man, I'm happy. Like, yeah, fuck you, Urban Meyer. And I don't know why. I I don't know why. I need you guys to diagnose why I dislike Urban Meyer because I didn't didn't know that I did before the season. Because there are three teams in Florida, one of which you will never be as good as as long as they have TB12 and Mm -hmm. who has destroyed your entire fanhood. But I love him now. He's he's good peeps now. I love him. But that's why. But that that team is like your aspiration. He's human now. And so it's just you and your Dolphins versus Jacksonville and Urban Meyer is the face of the devil. But I 
didn't. Ne- well, I think he actually might be the face of the devil. But I, I, I've never hated Jacksonville before. But now you do. Now I do. <laughs> now I do. I do. Uh, so really strange. He gets a loss. Um, I just, I think there's something about these like unctuous college coaches where like I remember when Saban went to coach the Dolphins and like really early on realized, oh, if I yell at these guys. They're just not going to give a shit, and they make three times my salary, so <laughs> it doesn't work here. <laughs> and, Yelling and, does not work with millionaires. Yeah, there's something about with, that interaction that I enjoy when they're like fresh out of college and thinking they can do the same things, and it doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. Also, did, did you put it in rapid fire that these nuts, Nick Saban? No, I didn't. I didn't even How, hear this. Right, let's do it Okay, now. so so Nick Saban apparently is a big fan of these nuts jokes. Oh, like, really? Big fan, yeah. It's, so it's like, like how the, apparently Bill Belichick loves the jerky boys. <laughs> like that's his favorite comedy. He listens to it like on in the car on the way to the games and stuff. But yeah, they have ahead. these these nutcases. They have their quirks, right? These these mm-hmm. these OCD uh, crazy leaders and stuff. They have these little quirks that like just keeps them somewhat normal. You know, yeah. like there's hope for both of them because of these two things: jerky boys and these nuts. You know, and it's it's like Tom Brady. It's like you knew he had like a funny side to him. But you never saw it until he left New England, and now he's like, he's basically trolling people online for a living, which yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. And everybody uh, wh- laughs while beating because, everyone like, in the yeah. sport all the time because Jesus Christ. <laughs> but like, so also like, Saban is is a super religious dude, right? So is he yeah. sitting there with his wife at church, and and we're like, okay, everyone come to the altar, and instead of like, come get communion. Uh, he turns to his wife and says, come get these nuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He probably does one of those. Yeah, It's great. That'd be awesome. I, I, I would literally pay to have him I just like, deliver these nuts joke to me. I like Saban a little bit more now because of that. Yeah, yeah he humanizes him, right? Yeah, before I was like, yeah, he's just a nutcase coach, scout, extraordinaire. And I'm like, now he's human. He's human. So two of his quarterbacks, two of his former quarterbacks faced off this week uh, in a game that I watched very intently. Uh, Mac Jones and Tua... Uh, they faced off as the Dolphins took on the New England Patriots. Uh, Tua is now Tua and O against <laughs> the, the Patriots. Uh, but so both guys were kind of smart and efficient. And, you know, Tua looked a little better than last season, but both guys just kind of looked like guys. So is it something to build on? Or how worried should I be, Terry, about the fact that Tua and I don't like Mac Jones? I keep saying he's Sam Badford 2.0. How worried am I that basically Tua was also Mac Jones yesterday? That's a good point. Sunday. That's a good point. The thing about Tua is that he's 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 gonna be fine. Like the team is built around him. Where Mac Jones is like for the next two three years, he probably might not produce a lot, but slowly you're gonna start looking at his numbers and be like, this guy's throwing like 28, 30 touchdowns a year. You know, very little interceptions. Like that's what I see from Mac Jones. A few really bad blowups. But as a Dolphins fan watching that game, there's a lot to look at because you guys look great. Like the Jim Dolphins look really, looks legit. Yeah, man. like the Dolphins look good. And I said this when Dolphins traded everything to get all those picks. Mm-hmm. I said give the Dolphins three years and they're in the Super Bowl. And next year is the third year, and yeah. I I still I still stand on that. Like I think I, I hope that someone can block Bowl. and 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 the offensive like like so the, you know they had three first downs negated by holding penalties, which is what I've witnessed my entire life as a Dolphins fan. So hopefully they can eventually get an offensive line. Yeah. Um, the only thing I saw in this game was the Bills winning that division. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and that's even as they lost to, to Ben Roethlisberger, who was carrying around, you know, 200 pounds of his de- his own dead body uh, from play to play. Um, like I don't know. Zach Wilson looked pretty good, man. No, the, the Jets are terrible. The team is terrible. He, the team is awful. God he's awful. He's fine. But They're terrible. He looked good. Yeah. He looked good. <laughs> um, he, he's going to be, at least he's going to be fun. And I'll say that. Uh, but but the thing is, like, I, I feel like the expectation has changed somewhat. Like, Terry, like, you know, you watched, you know, you're, 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 you're a, um, a Cowboys fan. And, and yeah. we all saw off of the, the, the crazy injury and off the soldier, the, the, the shoulder situation, Dak audibling on 15 of 28 runs that were scheduled to go to Ezekiel Elliott, audible to pass plays, threw the ball 58 times, 400 yards, and short of like a couple of balls that were just slightly short, I was like, that's one of the top three quarterbacks in the league. Like, that's like that's the the the, the expectation when you when you draft a guy high, right? It's it's what we see with 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 Dak who was drafted in the fourth round. It's what we see with Pat Mahomes who was drafted fourth um, round. Yeah, fourth round. Oh, 
Mahomes was drafted late in the first round, you know, like, I, I, but we, we're seeing these guys who just, there's no down and distance that's too much for these guys. And it's, um, it, to me, it's, it's, it's the absolute height of art. I was, I was talking to Duke, our graphite, and I said, um, having a guy like Dak or Mahomes is kind of like the, the, the Warriors figuring out that the three point shot is so valuable and they create this ball movement um, and the style of basketball that's just so aesthetically beautiful. Of, you yeah. Know, pass, 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 and then hit the open shot. And if you love the game, it, it's really, really um, fun to watch. And that's kind of what the quarterback position did, this inefficiency of like, if you don't have a guy who can move and throw the ball on the run and, and, and go run these, all these crazy off script plays, then, you know, do you really have a chance? Uh, Tom Brady, of course, won the Super Bowl, not doing any of those things, but the, the new wave seems to be that. Yeah, exactly. The thing is, is that. It's 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 fun to watch what it is now. And as a Cowboys fan and watching Dak Prescott, even in the loss, um, and I think it, all Cowboys fans have said the same shit, is that I like it was obviously it's a it's a oh one it's a one on the loss column, but the team looked really good. Mm-hmm. Dak looked really unbelievable. Second most yards this week after Derek fucking Carr. Just letting you know. Yeah. Um. And I'm and Derek Carr had an extra he had an extra period, right? Like he he went overtime. Yeah, it went overtime, and I expect I expect this to continue with Dak. He looks like he's on another level, and everybody's worried. Like, oh, Zeke is done. Zeke is done. Zeke is not done. Zeke is gonna have his five, six, seven games where he just goes off and he produces a lot. It's, he was just in a situation where he played against one of the f- best front sevens mm-hmm. in the league right now. I will say, uh, I, I how mean, can you get through Vita Vea and Sue, and then have yeah. to go through their linebackers and Devin White? Like, how do you get through that? I was it saying, just doesn't if, make sense. Vita Vea is when Dominican Sue was, and also they have Dominican Sue. No, also they, <laughs> you know, like they have. We're still what Dominican Sue yeah. is. Oh, uh, but but he, he it's the thing I will say this about Elliot, and, I, and again, this is based on one game, and who knows? Uh, and the game script obviously wasn't there for Zeke, but Tony Pollard looked like the most explosive back on the team. Like Zeke didn't seem to have that second gear, but again, he's also running against this ridiculous defense. So it's something to monitor. I agree with you, Terry. It's a bit of an overreaction of like, he had one bad game. Let's chill. <laughs> he's fine. He's still a really good running back. I, um, I, I have Tony Pollard in all four of my leagues as my third running back. Yeah, and I picked him in get, leagues that don't have Ezekiel Elliott because I know he has value. I have him in our, in our league that we have together. Mm-hmm. Um, it is, I was, this is Stefano just messaged me, our guest. Stefano just messaged me about the z pack thing. Um, <laughs> Which we'll talk about later on the show. We we'll hope. talk about later. Um, so, what was I saying with this? Dak. Zeke. 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 So, yeah. So, I drafted Tony Pollard in all four of my leagues. And in the league where I had uh, a Zeke, I got him in our league in that auction because I overpaid. Uh, I took Tony Pollard just in case – just to handcuff him because yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, McCarthy is not – a normal guy like he's just ego can attest to this like it's running back by whoever's doing better and that plus he loves here. smashing watermelons is that it? too I mean, who doesn't watermelons. the um i want to bring up this one play from uh mahomes him being down in the fourth quarter is nonsense because this play happened and i legitimately couldn't even understand where he was throwing the ball at the time while i was watching this play in 50 games and he's only at 47 games passing yards he's being chased as he heaves it down the bear, and the man is there. It's Hill able to get away from John Johnson, who was in the locker room to start the quarter. And he crosses the goal line for a one-play strike from 75 yards. As soon as Cleveland took that nine-point lead, you feel comfortable. You feel like you got a 90-win percentage. So 75 yards, one play. He said later in, in a press conference that, while well, he didn't see Tyreek, he just saw an arm and threw it at the arm. And I, I I can't even begin to dissect what that means. So I was I, I this this watching this highlight actually pisses me off because I had a nice parlay going with the Dolphins, um, the Chiefs, and the Steelers. Mm-hmm. And uh, Steelers were huge dogs. They were losing ten three or ten six at the time. So they were like plus two fifty. And then I had Cleveland at like minus one fifteen. I was like, okay, that's a good number for a team that's up. 12 points right now and then i had the dolphins tied like at plus 100 tied with the the pats i was like that's a nice little w for me too so i got two out of the three and all because the fucking browns couldn't stop Mahomes because, because they couldn't because the punter Mahomes. couldn't catch a punt yeah that too he couldn't catch and a snap it, that's and it's it's crazy to me to think 
that Mahomes is always just one play away from winning the game. Um, a, quarter, a quarterback of similar skill who um, seen many plays away from winning the game. Aaron Rodgers had a rough first game of the season. Um, <laughs> the head coach says it's an absolute embarrassment. That's what Fleur said. Aaron Rodgers said, no, it's not an embarrassment. It's just one game. Here is Stephen A. Smith's reaction to that. Of course. Performance of his career. He was so awful. Yeah. He was so awful that embarrassing doesn't even begin to describe. And I'm going to say something that I don't say about too many professional athletes. And I'm certainly not accusing as if I know definitively this is true. I'm just talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the optics, how it looked. It looked like he didn't care. He looked like he did not give a damn about how he played or how this outcome ended up being. He looked a bit lackadaisical, a bit laid back. He should have. It was the most shameful performance of Aaron Rodgers' career. To, to throw the ball, he threw the ball behind Devontae Adams one time and got it picked off by Adebo. Uh, Adebo, I believe that's how he's spelled. Paulson Adebo, I believe that's how he pronounces his name, okay? Then he flings up the football. He threw it behind Devontae Adams for the first interception, overthrew uh, somebody else when he got intercepted by Marcus Williams, okay? It was, and then to sit up there and to take offense, because that's how it seemed yeah. when he talked about right. when Matt LaFleur came back and talked about how embarrassed we were. It was embarrassing because the, uh, Devontae Adams was on the record in the press conference prior to the game talking about this is the most motivated we may have ever been. We, we are hyped. We ready to go to season. So we got that issue. Right. But as bad as Aaron Rodgers looked, and it was atrocious, equally as bad as Matt LaFleur. And I'm going to tell you why. The entire team looked ill-prepared. Ill-prepared, number one. And number two, Remember, they were a top 10 defense last year. Yeah. Top 10 against the pass, top 10 overall. Matt LaFleur replaces Mike Patton as your defensive coordinator. You bring in Joe Barry, who didn't have the greatest resume in Detroit, who didn't have the greatest resume in Washington as a defensive coordinator. Why the hell is he your defensive coordinator? Because their defense didn't look that great either. That's what I'm saying, Mike. Yep. That's what I... Yep. <laughs> I mean, listen, he's not wrong, but has Aaron Rodgers ever looked like he's taking the game too seriously? He's always looked laid back and hey, I think, I'll, just throw, I think I'll his, just throw this. Like, I think that's his personality. I think people mistake that sometimes for not giving a shit. I just think he's just not one of these guys who's like a quote unquote like rah rah leader kind of guy. Like he's just the yeah, guy. Yeah, he who, also he's not a guy who's his who elevates his you know his emotions. He's a very like yeah. calm guy. Like he doesn't like he doesn't get mad. He doesn't get sad. Like he's always right in the middle. But isn't that the benefit when you have a game like that that you know the next game this is gonna bother him zero percent? Like remember zero percent, and he'll probably have a career game next game. Like that season where he famously said "relax" and they went like thirteen and three after. No, he didn't say it. He spelled it. He spelled it. Yeah. Spelled it. Yeah. Eggs. Who are the Who are the Packers play next week? Uh. Ooh. Let me check that. It's a prime time game actually. Yeah. Uh. It's Monday night. Playing the Lions. I was going to say, please at tell home. me it's the Lions. If it's the Lions, that's a nice win for him. If it's at home, yeah, he's going to go off. But he's going to go that Lions, over 350. That Lions shit this week was wild. Like, was <laughs> crazy. That was ins- they, that they they converted, they, they, they scored, they converted to point convert, they got the ball back on the offside kick. It was it was insane. Uh, but anyway, just switching gears for a moment, Terry. Uh, baseball does the nostalgia thing probably better than most sports. Um, I remember when crossover games first started happening and the, the whole Subway series being a, a big deal. And, of course, on the 20th, century, 98. On the, on the 20th anniversary of uh, 9-11, they brought the Subway series back. Um, and they did, of course, a lot of, uh, you know, imaging and remembrance of, of that um, of that event. Uh, of course, that event affected New Yorkers more than anybody else in the world because it happened in New York City. Um, but I loved it because of all the crazy stuff that was happening um during the game and um one of the things was the yankees accused the mets of stealing signs in the first game by like using a system of whistles um and then lindor after hitting his second home run whistles to taunt the yankees bench on the home run and uh, we'll watch that in a second i'll just give the whole the whole breakdown uh stanton stops his trot to confront lindor at third base and then Lindor hits a third home run, and the, and the Mets win. Mets even win the series. I don't. Even, I can't figure out if they're good or not. But they are. Here's, they just suck. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's my thoughts exactly. Um, here's Lindor hitting that second home run and chirping the, the Yankees bench. It almost looked like he's saying Walker was hurt. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, oh, yeah, he's talking whistle right there. Right into the Yankee dugout. Oh, dude, shots fired. Wow. <laughs> the, the rivalry didn't need any more spice, but it just got it. So the Yankees, so the Yankees were whistling at them. The Yankees can they they said the the Mets were whistling and that's they were they were stealing signals that way and so the Yankees bench started whistling to taunt the Mets and then Lindor hit the home run anyway and then was using that like the whistle sign to like taunt back at the Yankees. Well, where is that where is that Geo Stanton thing? Uh, I oh, I couldn't see find I couldn't find a clip of that. I, I, uh, I saw yeah. when I was watching the game where Stanton stops at third to like lecture. <laughs> Lindor like and then like Lindor not giving a shit hammering another home run to win the game and it just for a long time baseball's always tried to to mandate the personality out of the game I personally love this I love guys look like they're having fun at a game your job is called a game like Terry when you and I go to work it's not a game Th these people play a game for a living let them have fun while doing it Let's enjoy the fact that they're still having fun while making all this money. People get so nervous. Like in the NFL, like you can't taunt anymore. Like there's all these weird rules. So they're like, hey, you know, we'll give them the number change, which is a little weird to me. I, at first I liked it, but now I'm like, it's I look at it. It's to me. Yeah. Like it's always like you see a guy wearing number seven. You're like, is he a backup? Like what are we doing here? You know what yeah. I mean? Is he a backup quarterback? Like, Did I forget to change his number when I drafted him in Madden? Like, yeah, exactly. That's basically what it is. It's like you're just choosing your numbers. And if Madden doesn't let you do it, then you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's you need the color in sport. You need the color. And Francisco Lindor, what he did is color. And baseball, out of all sports, needs it the most. It does. It really, really does. Um, like I, it, it's I, it's all good if you let them wear chains and stuff like that. And you know their styles and the sixteen headband, like uh, wristbands and all that shit. Like all their unique styles. Everybody has a, like Brian McCann, open shirt, nothing from under, with a cross. No gloves, no nothing, just hands, you know? And Vladimir Guerrero, same thing. It's their style. It's their unique. But at the end of the day, if there's no highlight to associate to that style, then nobody's going to see it because only the people watching are going to see it. You want to get more people to – more eyes to your game. See, you know what we need? Just like in hockey when you score a goal, you kind of do like the celebration. Everyone crowds together. You need yeah. that. Like someone scores a run or a home run. They do a little like dance or something, you know? Oh, baseball. Uh, oh, you get thrown at in baseball. Sorry? You no, know, baseball players have like sixteen handshakes. They they yeah, crowd each other. If you at celebrate like on the field, you get thrown at. The next, oh yeah, the next for sure. Like, right? yeah, like, like it, which is stupid. It, yeah, like what's his name? What was that pitcher that that went uh, too hard on his celebration? He played for the Yankees. He was a chunky guy. He was good. David Wells. Fuck. Roger. No, Thomas. no, 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 no. They it have was a lot like of chunky guys in their history. Early, early two thousand. Sebastia. No, it was like a. I think he was like a Spanish guy, but he had a weird name. Bartolo Colon. No, Bartolo Colon never played for the Yankees. Did he play a season? I think he played a season with the Yankees. For the Yankees, I don't think he ever did. Oh man, I'm trying to find... closer. He was he was a starter, but and he and he kind of like he struck out a guy and he just like fucking celebrated hard. And then the next that the next time the guy was up, he he hit a home run, so he started celebrating hard. Like that's good. Joey yeah. Batista, even though I hate the I hate the Blue Jays, Joey Batista flipping the bat. Like, that's that's awesome. good. Like. Like I was working for Rogers at the time, that made my my shares skyrocket. I made so much money off of that bad flip. You know what I mean? So there's like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of moving parts, and you got to let them be them. Yeah, and if ever you want to talk trust to, to Stanton, you know, just throw him a curveball at uh, 0 and 2, and it's a guaranteed strikeout. So there you go. Um, literally every time, literally every time. Um, th this other thing happened, Terry, and I immediately thought of you when I saw this happen, just because I knew this is the job. Jabba Chamberlain. Oh, Jabba, Jabba Chamberlain. They had so many chunky pitchers. It's crazy. <laughs> um, the uh, I, This happened, and I thought of you immediately. Uh, not because it's something you do, but just because I, this story to me is something that I thought you'd thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. Um, yes. Florida State offensive line Brady Scott proposed to his girlfriend um, after the game against Jacksonville State. Here's a few things that went wrong, though. Uh, and here's the picture. Eagles putting it up. A uh, very touching moment. But here's a few things that surround this. One is that um, despite being a 20-point favorite, um, Florida State lost this game on the last play of the game. It wasn't a Hail Mary. It was just a go to the sideline, and then he beats two defenders to score. 
And when asked why they weren't in prevent, the coach said, well, I was worried about the timeout. He was worried about the timeout at six seconds left from Jacksonville State. Here's the other thing. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. It's not even like a state rival. It's ja- It's not even the good Jacksonville. It's Jacksonville, Alabama. Oh, for real? Yes. <laughs> that's my favorite part of that's the story. E- that's even worse. Did that's you know that they story. even had a school, that it existed as a city, and that they played no. college football? Absolutely not. None of those things. <laughs> also, that they lost to the Gamecocks. Not the South Carolina Gamecocks. The Jacksonville State, <laughs> Alabama Gamecocks. So, there we go. Also, it's like, he's like, okay, I have to propose to her like tonight. Maybe she was leaving and he's like, I'm not going to see her for three weeks. You you know, he probably invited family. Her family's probably there. Yeah. Like there's a re like you know when you're, you're also twenty point favorites, so the plan is to win. Yeah, like, he he got the, he got like the, he arranged this for a game. He was pretty sure the they plan were was win. in motion. It was right? too late to pull back. And like he's getting slaughtered online, but I was like, man, when you plan a proposal, a you don't want to wait anymore, <laughs> and b there's other things that are involved with the plan. Like you've told family, and it, it, again, there's people probably there. You probably have reservations booked at, at you know some place to get dinner and all these things. And yeah, instead uh, he gets mocked because ins- I couldn't find the the video, but what I saw it um, sort of during like the, the 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 college game day thing, whatever. Um, in the in the replays, Terry, you actually see guys celebrating in the background. You see Jacksonville State players celebrating in the background while he's proposing, <laughs> and it's <was> just <laughs> bad optics. But I don't think you can go another way. It's a nice camera. It's a nice. It's a nice. The photographer was like, "I'm gonna capture a moment right here." Yeah. And this is the best moment ever. But like for it. for that's that's gonna be the picture for all times for wedding for marriages that don't last. Like that's they should they should blow it up and have somebody like do an oil painting out of it. You know. If I if I was a, a divorce lawyer, I would have that picture in my office with the, with <laughs> with the score at the top. You know, and, yeah. the, and the spread and the spread. And, and right, like Jacksonville State. Alabama. Alabama. Gamecocks, not South Carolina. Not, not South Carolina. <laughs> the other one. W, Florida State, L, minus 20 spread pregame. Absolutely. Um, so we have we have an amazing interview lined up. Um, we have Stefano Giliati. He plays for HC Bolzano, or most recently played for HC Bolzano in uh, Italy. Uh, he's going to talk to us about his journey as a Canadian and now Italian hockey player. Talk to us a little bit about the culture of hockey in uh, Italy as well as all sorts of stupidities that we ask him about. Um, and all of that is coming up next. And we're back. Joining us as promised is uh, Stefano Giliati. He's a forward, uh, or most recently was a forward uh, for HC Bolzano in uh, Italy of the uh, ICEHL. Um, Stefano, first of all, how's it going, bud? It's going great. Nice to... Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Oh, a pleasure having you on, man. It's honestly... Uh, for me, it, it doesn't really change much because... But I knew that Pease would enjoy this because, you know, you're Italian, you played for Italy. Pease is a diehard Italian to the point like where every other country doesn't exist except for Italy. Right, so, right. like... Yeah, yeah, often. So when he when we found out, I was like, "Listen, I can get Stefano." He's like, "Oh, do it." And then Pete has just been yeah. rock hard ever since. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I I actually threw out today's ration of Viagra. Not necessary. It's gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. ready to go. Not necessary. And uh, Steph- yeah, the wife's birthday this weekend. She's gonna be good to go. No blue oh, yeah. pill for you, my friend. Wait for yeah. after the show. Yeah. Um, Stefano, how is playing hockey in Italy? It's obviously not something that's. Um, you know, uh, culturally significant in the same way, you know, soccer is, for example. Um, so what's that experience been like playing, going from Montreal, Canada to to uh, a country where that's not uh, ingrained in the culture in the same way that you're used to? Uh, you, uh, you guys would be surprised. Um, where I'm playing uh, in Italy, in, in the north, in uh, Alto Adige, is... Uh, <sighs> Hockey is the main sport. So when I, after my entry level, uh, after my three-year entry level with uh, Toronto and Tampa Bay, I uh, came over to Europe, and my uh, my first stop here was in Boltano, and um, I was 24 years old. It was an unbelievable experience. Uh, really? At at yeah, absolutely. It's 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 the most beautiful city you could. All right, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but <laughs> being here, maybe I'm a little bit, uh, you know, uh, being here at 24 years old, I didn't get to appreciate it the way I 
do now. But uh, even at that age, I knew um, that one day I was going to come back. So 24 years old, I made my first stop here in Europe. I wanted to go on and do better things after my my 24 uh, year old season. Uh, I knew I wanted to go to you know I wanted to to, to play in higher leagues, and uh, I knew one day coming back to Bolton was what I wanted to do, and that's what I did. I brought my family here. Um, you know, I have two kids now with my wife, and playing in uh, playing in the Alps. Uh, in this beautiful city and you guys be surprised man uh in playoffs we get five six thousand fans seven thousand fans uh you know i you know it's it's great well i mean it's it's a it's a good league it'll be time league right well it's, it's actually gone a lot better i knew like nicky romano i don't know if you know nicky romano but he played in the league for years i think he played for bolzano actually now that i think about it he might have played for bolzano but it, it's it's a league that people don't realize but a lot of people you know that are looking to you know play a little bit more a few more minutes here and there they go to italy and they and they do really well and for you now you have your passport so you played with italy what was that like yeah it was absolutely great so when i first played here when i was 24 years old it was boltano participating in the italian league mm-hmm. now uh throughout the years eight years later or 10 years later actually now we're actually part of the ice hl which is, which is the international central european hockey league so there's eight Austrian teams, uh, a Slovenian team, a Czech team, uh, a Slovakian team. So it's a lot more competitive. We're actually, or there, actually, there is another Italian team. So there's two Italian teams. So it's a lot more competitive now where the salaries got higher. So uh, coming back here was, was uh, the, the, the timing was right. But playing for Italy, like you said, uh, I had to do my two years. I, I had to play in Italy for two years. Uh, to be able to be eligible for the national team, mm-hmm. so like like I said before, like I, I always wanted to come back and do that. Now that I finally played, finally got eligible for the national team, it was an unbelievable experience. Like going to to Latvia and just putting on that that Italian jersey was uh, was. was was truly awesome, you know. Uh, and score and scoring that sick goal too that everybody was like it was retweeted everywhere. That was just a cherry on the top, you know. I, I got uh, I got uh, I, I busted my ass all tournament. I had so many chances. I could have scored. I I, I I felt like I could could have scored more. The last game, the last period, I finally scored a goal. It was a uh, it was it was kind of a relief, but uh, a great feeling nonetheless. Uh, Stefano, the Italian team seems to be qualified for the 2026 Winter Olympics uh, that Milan yeah. and Cortina are going to be hosting. You got a little bit of time to go still, but right now you're technically on the international roster for Italy. So what are the chances you hold your spot for another five years and get to go for an Olympic medal in uh, in Milan? <laughs> My wife would kill me. No, I'm kidding. She's, <laughs> she's great. She. She, uh, she's actually my, my, my biggest supporter. And, um, uh, I, uh, I don't know if, if I have that left in me. I've always been, um, someone who's been, uh, in top shape and, you know, I always win, I always win the fitness testing every year. Uh, luckily I've been playing in Europe since I was 24 years old. So I've only been hit about 12 times in the past. 10 years so i i I injured zero like knock on wood you know uh no serious injuries can i play another five four years i don't know i i I don't know maybe i'll coach you know i'm into coaching now so maybe i'll coach or something the uh what's uh what's playing playing in the olympics would be a dream but what's interesting about that eagle is uh in five years uh stefano will be uh my current age and i don't think uh, there will be a greater disparity between what two people looked like at 38 years old than me and Stefano. I think it'll be a it'll be quite a disparity. Uh, Stefano, um, I saw that you you were you went undrafted, but you were signed by the Toronto Maple Leafs as a free agent and then traded. Um, so I always find it interesting for players who have played in in leagues that are you know not the NHL because the vast majority of professional hockey players play outside the NHL. Uh, but we very rarely get to hear their story. So I was I was kind of, kind of curious of what that was like to sort of uh, be there and then um, be traded and then end up, you know, in Europe and like what, what that whole process was like for you. 
Yeah, uh, I was I was uh, kind of an afterthought throughout my whole career. So even in juniors, when uh, I went undrafted my first year going into juniors, uh, I had a really good 20-year-old season. I actually went to the draft in uh, Vancouver when I was 18 years old, uh, sat through the all seven rounds. Uh, I'll never forget the feeling sitting in the stands and hearing that last pick happen after the seventh round and, and tears coming down my eyes. And, uh, you know, uh, two years later, it was kind of blessing in disguise because I got to, I got to choose where I went mm-hmm. um, because I had such a good 20-year-old year in juniors. I had five, six, seven teams after me, and uh, my agent kind of brought to me all these these teams and said, you know, you, you have you, you have options, and I chose Toronto because I thought, you know, this is the worst, the worst fucking team in the league at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, yeah. Uh, Toronto close to home yeah that'd be great a few people are gonna be mad at me in Montreal but you know what uh they had offered me the most money at the time uh also so uh you also have to think the team that offers the most money could be or could be the most interested in you mm-hmm. uh and also like I said you know they 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 had an older team which wasn't good so I said this would be a great opportunity but um I ended up uh playing with the Marlies my first year and it was kind of it was a kind of shitty situation because uh, it was the, the Marley's second year in Toronto. They were in Newfoundland before, and uh, it was a shitty situation because they wanted to boost their their fan. Uh, I, I guess get more attendance, and they had about like we had about thirteen guys on one ways. I guess back then the the AHL didn't count towards the salary cap. Mm-hmm. They were just signing these, these, they were signing players like base Metallica, Boyd Devereaux, uh, Stefan Cronwall. Uh, I, I can name off the top of my head. I don't know. Just we familiar had names basically. Yeah, yeah. Familiar names where they would say, Hey, you know what? Your NHL career is done. We'll give you the minimum NHL salary, but you're going to play in Toronto. You're going to live the NHL life because you're going to play in Toronto. You're going to, you're going to make an NHL salary. You don't have to pay escrow. So you're probably be making more. You, you'll be making more than you would if you were in the NHL. And we'll come and we'll win the championship. We didn't win that year. We ended up going into semifinals. But as a 20-year-old kid going up and playing and playing on the fourth line or sitting in the stands and, you know, maybe wasn't the best situation for me. Uh, it was a great – it was a great experience and I learned a whole lot I had Doug Gilmore as my assistant coach cool. uh, I had Greg Gilbert who won two Stanley Cups was my head coach uh, I had uh, you know like the guys that I named a bunch of uh, Mark Bell you know like a bunch of NHLers who who were who were my teenagers it was a great experience uh, they would it was a, it was a party team which was which was kind of crazy oh, yeah. but as my my first year, as my first year in Toronto was was kind of not. Uh... Why not? Um, yeah, so Stefano, so you're in Italy now. You're waiting. You were telling us before off air, but you're wait, you're waiting for the call to get on the roster. Like, what are we like? What's the situation? Is the season going to happen? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm kind of a crazy situation right now. I just came back from Olympic qualifying with the with the national team. We had a tournament between uh, Italy, Latvia, Hungary, and France. And uh, one of those teams had a bye to the Olympics, whoever won that weekend tournament. So uh, I was in Montreal. I trained all summer, uh, came over to Italy. This was uh, just a few weeks ago. And we ended up finishing last. So uh, we lost all three games. So we won't be participating in the 2022 Olympics, which is okay. now in February. Yeah. So that was kind of a, that was kind of a tough hit. Uh, we... Uh, we just we just didn't have the preparation that the other teams had uh, compared to Latvia and yeah. France, who were all summer. Obviously, they have the top France has top level NHL guys, and so does uh, so does Latvia. They have a KHL team, and they're in, in Riga. So um, we got we, we got our asses kicked, and now uh, now I'm here. Um, I'm here staying in Boltano, where kind of the the center of Italian hockey. is. And just kind of waiting around, um, 
seeing if uh, any any spots open up and yeah. And uh, so you said you're at an Airbnb, right? So your family's with you in the Airbnb, or you, did they so, stay in Montreal and they're so gonna fly in when you're ready? My, yeah, my family never comes up with me for uh, for training camp because it's usually two days, and uh, we're usually on on longer road trips, four or five day road trips. I always keep them. Well, we always decide that the best thing for them to do is to stay at home for uh, for the first couple of months of the season until the apartment's set up and uh, yeah. and everything's settled in, season starts, and then then they fly up to come in. And they stay there for the season with you. Your wife must love it. She loves it, and she loves it. Uh, my kid uh, is just starting out. He's getting ready to to go to school. So nice. uh, hopefully, wherever I am, he can go to Italian school and and and. And learn the language. My daughter is only one years old, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's beautiful here, and we love it. How much better was your Italian? Is your Italian now compared to what it was before you played there? Better for sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I know three days here. in when I go to Italy. Three days in, I'm I'm like double fluency yeah. from, yeah, from yeah. when I got there. Yeah, you got to know it's, it's it's half German here though. Oh yeah, uh, I'm ah, in yes, the German yes. part. I'm in the German part, so uh, the f- in Boltano, it's so how's your German? Like, uh, <laughs> terrible. I, I played three years in Germany, two years here, and I I, I can't say it. I I I don't know a lick, man. What about Finnish? You played in Finland too. Finnish. My three years in Finland were awesome. I I don't speak Finnish. That's even harder. It's a tough language, Finland. It Finnish, man. It's nuts. It's one of the hardest. Yeah. It's yeah. I've hard. al- I've always wanted to go to Finland, though, for some reason. I mean, yeah. listen, I I I like. I, I like Finnish hockey players because you know it's like a yeah. style that I like. But the idea of Finland, I feel like it's like a clean place. It is. No? It yeah, is. no need people for Z-packs there. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's a dream. <laughs> the, the people are great, and uh, and uh, it's uh, the only thing is I, I even I when I first went there, I went there from Boltano to Finland on a on a tryout, um, and my agent warned me. He's like, "Listen, G, like." You gotta know, it gets dark there. In November, it gets dark. In in December, it gets dark. There's no sun in the in, in the in the winter time. Like, yeah, don't worry. You know, like the hockey's great. I love it. You know, but I'm telling you, when we had uh, something like eight hours of sun in the month of November, it it, it hits you, man. That's it crazy. You. Yeah, you 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 get to the rink at 9 a.m. It's dark. You leave the rink at 1.30 p.m., the sun's going down if there's no clouds, which hardly ever there's no clouds because it's always raining. It's always cloudy. So anytime, I think I, I, I remember that month, um, the sun was out before practice and coach canceled practice. He's like, guys, go outside, play soccer because uh, it's just, just, go, just go see the sun. Like, go outside yeah. and see the sun practice is canceled so it, it was great but it gets to you when uh when uh when it's dark and those long january days. well it makes sense it makes sense why there's like such a small population over there right it's it's hard to like to motivate yeah. to grow the population it's such a small area too you know but i get it but i'm sure in the summer it's beautiful it's like too much sun almost you know that's right that's right yeah yeah the opposite- definitely I have a I have a last question for you here. So yeah. since you actually do travel back and forth between uh, Montreal and Italy pretty often, um, I'm yeah. curious if you can enlighten us for any uh, curse words or profanities that are specific to the Bolzano region, which we would never hear here in Montreal. Because oh, both Keith question. and I are Italian, right? So we know the traditional yeah. ones. But like, can you give us like a very one step of our one? game? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, the Dio Cane is the, the, the favorite from the Italians. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? What does that mean? God dog. Dio, yeah. Dio, yeah. God dog, I guess. Like God like bitch. A, yeah, you, I've, heard, I've heard like Porco Cano before is the other one I'm used to. But yeah. Porco Porco Cane, yeah Dio, Dio Cane is their favorite. Um, they call us uh, they call us Balubas. The uh, the Canadians who come over with the Italian passwords, they call us Balubas. I don't, still don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> What else? Like belugas, uh, like the uh, whale? Baluba. 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 Oh, yeah. I've heard it. I don't know what it means either. Yeah. What's yeah, what's man, like it. the what's like the late night, uh, like dirty meal that you guys eat in Italy? Like I feel like here, I have a related like, question to end it. So you you go. Sit, yeah. I want, I want to come. Here like here like like you're from La Salle. Yeah. Right? In Montreal, yeah. 
you get you go to bocce's you get a sandwich or you go to like a bit right, right, get a pooter right. but like in italy what is it are you going like getting pasta like there's uh, a pizza i guess pizza, it's pizza pizza for sure you can get pizza anywhere there's the kebabs because you have the, the turks always. who come here and open the the the, the kebab shops um and uh wiener schnitzels because we're in the german part it's a ah, lot of the point. very yeah the wiener schnitzels and you get the uh and you get the sausages, the 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 wurzels, yeah. the yeah. Yeah, what are they called? So, what are those sausages called? Those German sausages? Um, bratwurst. Not bratwurst. Is that pork? Bratwurst. 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 Yeah, bratwurst, bratwurst yeah. or wurzels. Yeah. Before we get to peas, baluba translates to unruly or wild person. Oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah, like you're a wild guy. <laughs> okay. All those yeah. Z-packs, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, the, the, what I, I to sort of build on what Terry was asking, uh, the last thing I would ask you before that you go, Stefano, is, um, you know, here at a game, the most common snack, of course, is you get yourself a hot dog, get yourself a beer. Um, playing in Italy, I know it's close to the German side, so maybe the beer is the same. Um, is it a liter of wine instead? You guys doing, you know, uh, sausage, wine. sausage and peppers in the in the uh, in the crowd? Yeah. Like, what's, what's like the concessions like? A, juice box with a straw and has wine in it. I've had yeah, this. Yeah, they have the the the, the uh, Aperol spritzes are huge here. Oh, that, yeah, uh, yeah, they love those. I love. <laughs> I like Aperol spritz for a hockey game. That's very classy. Uh, <laughs> not for a maybe a game, brunch, maybe not, but it's beer. It's, it's beer for sure here. It's uh, it's it's uh, wine country. When you're when I drive home from the arena every day, I'm driving through vineyards. There's grapes everywhere and apples everywhere. Uh, so the wine, there's, there's the best vineyards, some of the best vineyards in the world around this here. So, nice. uh, it's a lot of wine. Um, it's a lot of beer also. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of beer, different types of beer. Yeah. You got to know the specific types of beer, what glass to, to drink them in. The same thing with the wines, uh, what wine to have at lunch or dinner. And it's, uh, it's a whole culture here for wine. sure. No. Love a lunch. Yeah. Wine. Thank you, Stefano, yeah. for joining us. Stefano Giliati, uh, of course, Thanks. he uh, joins us courtesy of the ICEHL. Uh, hopefully, he'll be a member of HC Bolzano uh, any any minute now. Uh, still waiting, but uh, we have our hopes for you, Stefano. Uh, best of luck. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Stefano. Appreciate, appreciate you coming you on, buddy. And, we'll talk and we're back. Guys, I don't know about you, but I really want to go watch hockey in Italy. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. It sounds like a movie. honestly, I was supposed, I might be going for like a youth hockey tournament in um, maybe November, December. I don't know when it exactly it is, but uh, I, like I'm excited to go. Like I really want everybody that go that I know goes there. The tournament happens every year. Mm-hmm. Everybody I know that goes there says they love it. That's awesome, man. Stefan was awesome. He was a great guest. Um, and who brought us that guest, Terry? Uh, that guest was brought to you by Hot Streak Fantasy, as you can see at the bottom mm-hmm. of your screen. Pick two to three players, NFL, MLB right now, whatever's active. Pick two to three players in each game, and you can make some money. Bet on who's going to get more yards on the next pass or who's going to get more ru- more rushing yards on the next on the next run. Bet on anything. There's plenty of options. There's open markets for everything. It's hot streak fantasy. But when you do that and when you do register, available on iOS only, not Android, when you do register, make sure to use promo code hot sauce and they'll give you your – initial deposit back as a bonus uh so it's double your money just by writing hot sauce in when you register for the app it's the best app on the market even mo who doesn't gamble loves this app absolutely and uh i uh, i was excited i was excited to see they brought football to the fold um, yeah so to be clear nfl betting is available on hot streak as of last week i i i instantly texted like all of the group chats for my different uh, fantasy leagues and all of them were like oh yes finally 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 uh so oh, nice. super exciting Super exciting. Yeah. Um, so it's time for? Time for Rapid Fire. Um, we have to start on Actually, a little bit of a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so about the sponsor, Gianni, who came on the show a couple uh, a few months ago. He works for Hot Streak. Mm-hmm. He, was on, he was on Gary V's podcast last week. Yeah, saw that. Saw that. Gary Vaynerchuk is pretty sick. So if you want to meet Gary Vaynerchuk, get the app. I'll put in a good word. I know Gianni pretty well. You know, so it works. Or just sleep with him directly. Yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, I would. Whatever's easier. Whatever's the key easier. to his heart is an NFT. I wouldn't call him easy. He's, he, his love is like an NFT. Yeah, it is. Shared. 
We have to start with a little bit of a somber note with our first topic, funny people, Canadian actor, comedian, legend in my heart, Norm MacDonald has uh, passed away from cancer at 61. Um, Pease, I love how you mentioned a quiet battle with cancer. Um, have you seen the clip from his comedy special around the topic of battle with cancer? I, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't see so that. So you guys talk about it. I'm going to find a clip. Okay, it's funny. worth it. Um, so for me, he's always going to be the weekend update guy. Um, obviously, if you watch the show, you realize comedy is important to us. It's very important to me. I'm, I'm a fan of the art form. And um, we talked about all show apparently how I'm so much older than everyone else. So first of all, uh, you can all get fucked. Second of all, um, I, I loved him there. I loved him in Saturday Night, uh, Saturday Night Live. I loved him uh, at Weekend uh, Weekend Update. That's that's where I got to know him. That's, and anytime I saw him in a movie, I would watch the movie that he was in, where he was rarely the star, because of how much I loved him from Weekend Update. He had this his cadence, the way he spoke, mm-hmm. which just made everything so much funnier. You know what I mean? Like the the one thing about Norm Macdonald that I, like for you it's Weekend Update. Weekend Update's great, but like I was more of a um, of uh, a Jimmy Fallon weekend update, like it was a little. I was a little young. I'm a little younger than you, so like yeah. I had the next generation, right? Colin Quinn, probably one of my favorite weekend updates. And he was the one to go over, right? Yeah, he normally yeah, yeah, was fam- unbelievable. And famously, my favorite you character. The, you talk about the cadence, like famously, one of the jokes he had was, uh, you know, about Anne Marie Presley and and uh, Michael Jackson getting divorced, and he said, "Yeah, Anne Marie Presley, like the thing is." Uh, I never saw it come together because uh, she's really like a stay-at-home type and he's really uh, a pedophile. And uh, <laughs> the, the delivery and the cadence was uh, was what made it. Um, he wasn't. He wrote a lot of the material for Saturday Night Live as well. He yeah. wasn't afraid to go after people uh, because he just thought that was the role of comedy, famously going after O.J. Simpson uh, during the trial as well, uh, that it, he believes cost him his gig at Saturday Night Live. Of course it did. Him and Burt Reynolds, uh, him, him doing Burt Reynolds is not. Yeah, uh, yeah, him doing Burt Reynolds is unbelievable. He's is probably one of the funniest characters in SNL history. The penis like is, mightier than the sword. Yeah, yeah penis mightier. <laughs> I think it's this clip. Hold on, I was trying to find it from a special. Let's yeah. see if it's this one. <laughs> and the reason I don't like it is because in the old days they go, "Hey, that old man died." Now they go, "Hey, he he lost his battle." That's no way to end your life, you know. What a loser that guy was. <laughs> Last thing he did was lose. <laughs> he was waging a brave battle, but at the end, I guess he got kind of cowardly was what happened. <laughs> and then the bowel cancer, it got brave. You got to give it to the bowel cancer. You know, they were in a battle. And then, what the And I'm pretty sure, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure if the cancer dies, I mean, if you die, the cancer also dies at exactly the same time. So that, to me, is not a loss, that's a draw. That's a, you know what I mean? It's not like the cancer's gonna jump up and go, ah, I'm Uncle Bert's wife, where is he? I'm gonna miss the guy. Legend, legend. Yeah. Yeah, on Adam Sandler movies too, he was classic. And- and that's yeah, the, just, like, just legend. Legend. That's, that's such a fitting tribute to him, Eagle, because that's the way he'd want to be remembered with regards yeah. to his cancer. And he Not wrote that loop. joke in 2011. Apparently, he's been battling cancer for nine years. I had no idea. Nobody wow. had any idea. This was a uh, Black Panther. I can't remember his name. Jay, uh, I'm going to butcher this. What's his Chadwick name? Chadwick Boseman. Yes, Chadwick Boseman. You, you butcher every name, so it wouldn't be any different. But yeah, basically nobody knew. Yeah. But anyway. All right. Uh, Norm McDon- next- McDonald, the loser. Yeah, we all know. Wait, yeah. The draw. Or the draw. He draw. Yeah. He drew. 500, 500, 500 yeah. records. All right. Speaking of lives, we have nine of them here. Uh, fans appear to have saved a cat that was dangling from one of the upper decks during the uh, Miami Hurricanes game, and there's video of it. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell. 
So the first thing I thought of was, I guess that's not disrespecting the flag in an NFL game or a football nope. game, right? No, nope, that's not disrespecting. <laughs> I mean, listen, you save the cat, America, saving people, you know, America, all that yeah. stuff. But, you know, I mean, just the cats are, the cat's going to land on his feet, just let him fall. That's what I was thinking. I was like, I think they can fall pretty, pretty decent height, I imagine. I don't know. That's a pretty high fall. Like that. It is, is a pretty high fall, and there's like seats there. And you smack his cement. face. Yeah. yeah. It's not fun. For sure, for sure. It's uh, hey, pretty wild. Cat. Where'd the cat come from is my question. Did someone oh, bring plenty. their cat to a game? It's, it's like arenas, like stadiums like that, outdoor stadiums like that are notorious for having cats. Yeah. Well, like I would imagine cats. specifically Hard Rock Stadium, it's less of a stadium and more of a, a piece of cement that's abandoned for most days of the year. It's yeah, exactly. Really in the so, middle I mean, of nowhere. The smell of the garbage brings them, you know, so I, they're just all over. You're talking about the dolphins again? Yeah. You're talking shit with the dolphins again? Always. All right, next. Old Town Drip. Fans of the Met Gala were treated to three outfit changes from Lil Nas X. Why is this a topic? Why is this a topic? Why is this a topic? I love the Met. I I find the Met one of the most endless events in the history of anything. And I had an event for a mouse that died. Like Ocasio I'm Cortez was captivated. wearing, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm, it, I, I'm AOC was wearing like a wedding dress that said "Tax the Rich" on it. Like, yeah. that was a great dress, by the way. Really nice color on there. Well, so she's a beautiful woman, but like you know, that dress probably cost more than a lot of the rich paid in taxes. Also, she's at a place where like everybody's rich. I love the part of this <laughs> where he turns into C-3PO. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but cool. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. That's classic, man. Look at this pose. You think all that's custom? Yeah, it's gotta be fair. You, you, you can't think just you rent. Get... You can't just rent a robot suit, Terry. You can't. You can't rent C three PO. No. He didn't. I he mean, didn't I mean, just like can pull it off the rack. PPO, but I think that's an actual like custom design. Yeah, it won't, it won't be. It won't look be at that. Look at the shape so he, around that. He didn't, he right didn't get that. He didn't get that in the costume section at Winners. No, no, no. That's <laughs> that's not a three PO ass. That's a little Nas X ass. Yeah. He made sure. He didn't. Make sure the robot emphasized ass. He didn't have to use his TJ Maxx card to get no. his <laughs> I don't. I don't think he owns a TJ Maxx card. I'd be surprised. <laughs> TJ Maxx would be a sick sponsor right now. It, it reminds me of... Uh, okay, I, fast I, forward to the third outfit. Yeah, let's just get the, it's a longer clip than I realized. Yeah. All right, that's it. Beautiful. Oh. No, no, he, he, they cut away for a second because they don't realize it's a third outfit. A chance the rapper's wife is beautiful. This is, uh, this is the worst, worst way... Anybody wants to spend watching our podcast <laughs> is waiting for <laughs> Little Nas X there to take go. off his Third gold outfit. suit to, to keep another gold suit on. A gold tr- uh, track suit. A little track suit a of sorts. All right, forget about this. Now, let's is that, go. Is he do Pilates or something? He's got to. He's got yeah, to. he's very he's very limber. Um, so, Terry, which outfit would you rock? Which of the three Little Nas X, uh, X outfits would you go with? Oh, definitely the big one with that covers everything because you can have like snacks under there and stuff. And it's like, you know, you can even be naked under there. You know, it's like nobody knows what you're doing. Like you're covered. You're walking in a box. The best thing about wearing that big one to hide the snacks is that we're the kind of guys who would need that because we eat the snacks. So therefore, yeah. we need the thing that covers the body. That exactly. Eats the yeah. It's it's a it's a um a self fulfilling prophecy really self fulfilling prophecy. I would never fit into this outfit. So I was gonna say I, I would. It wouldn't look the same. I, I would look. It would look like a, a pregnancy shoot if I was wearing it. I think yeah, I exactly. like that one the best though. As much as I'd love to cosplay as three three PO, I do like the form fitting clothing. So I think that's more my style. Yeah. Hey, can we can we have like no more Met Gala stuff in the history on the show forever? In the history of till next Gala year, Terry. <laughs> it's time for <laughs> the gala. <laughs> we should we should do a live broadcast of the gala next year. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. Brown out. Mm-hmm. Cleveland Brown just make safety fun of Rodney Harrison was ejected after he had an altercation with one of the Chiefs coaches on the sideline. He's had in the past in the passing game as well. Oh Whoa. that might be an early exit for Ronnie Harrison. Taking a swing. So they had to video review this, and eventually they decided to throw him out. Correct call, probably. Of course, correct call. You don't touch him. If the coach grabbed him, then I get it. But like the coach, the coach shoved him first. 
Um, oh, I did. Okay. So here's the thing where like, I understand. And, 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 you know, you can't be shoving a coach anyway. Uh, first of all, the NFL commentators pretending this is some sort of sacred thing. It's a, it's a sport where we bet on violence. First thing. Second thing, um, you know, if I'm a coach and I'm dumb enough to shove a player, I get what I deserve. I get what I deserve. Like, I, I wouldn't expect to hit an NFL player and think I'd, I'd come out of it okay. He has protection. You don't. Yeah, but also leave him alone and don't touch him. <laughs> Next, to be prepared is half the victory. Uh, Jameis Winston came out and absolutely destroyed the Green Bay Packers this week. Uh, part of that was because of the coaching staff, and so he had this to say about uh, going into this game and what they managed to help him with. Defense in the running game give overall shape to the way this played out, Jameis. Well, I just think we were prepared. You know, one thing my uh, my trainer he told me, he said, "What did he say?" He just told us to be prepared. I love that he couldn't remember the cliche. Whatever the cliche how, was, that the coach gave him. I love how quickly he gave up on it too. Genius, Genius. just keep it rolling, keep it rolling. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, what did he say? He just said prepare. Like he's like, I'm not gonna remember what he said because I don't but have a brain. It's good advice. You have kids. Hey, I got this test coming up, Dad. What do I do? Just be prepared. Be prepared. Just be, Just be prepared, prepared, man. Just yeah. be prepared. Go ahead. Go ahead. James Winston, man, he's never short of a nice soundbite, that's for sure. Well, it, first he was in this W's, case. now he's busy being prepared. I mean, yeah. can't really go wrong there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Slim, by the way. Looks great. He lo- and, and he played really well. He played yeah. really well. Lazy James. And our last topic for today, have you seen my blue dog? Um... Us, I think, we're slightly on the older edge when I've this never came seen out. A okay, second shun- of you're okay. shunned. You're shunned forever. Okay. So, Terry, me and you, I think we're on the older edge. But I think our siblings or like our cousins were watching a lot of Blues Clues. Oh yeah, we were like you know babysitting them when they were kids and everything. So we've seen our Definitely. fair share. Steve from Blues Clues, with rumors to have left to go fight in Afghanistan, is now oh. back, presumably after the war in Afghanistan ended, with this message for all of us. <laughs> Hi, you got a second? Okay, you remember how when we were younger we used to um, run around and hang out with Blue and find clues and talk to Mr. Salt and freak out about the mail and do all the fun stuff and then one day I was like, oh hey, guess what, big news, I'm leaving. Uh, This is my brother Joe, he's your new best friend and then I got on a bus and I left and we didn't see each other for like a really long time. Can we just talk about that? Great. Because I, I realized that, that that was kind of abrupt. Um, I just kind of got up and went to college. And uh, that was really challenging, by the way, but great because I got to use my mind and take a step at a time. And now I literally am doing many of the things that I wanted to do. And then look at you, and look at all you have done, and all you have accomplished in all that time. And it just, it's just so amazing, right? I mean, we started out with clues. I'm waiting for it. And now it's what? Student loans, and um, jobs, and families. And some of it has been kind of hard. You know? I know you know. And I wanted to tell you that I I really couldn't have done all of that without your help. And in fact, all the help that you helped me with when we were younger is still helping me today, right now. And that's super cool. I guess I just wanted to say that after all these years, I never forgot you, ever. And I'm super glad we're still friends. Thanks for listening. You look great, by the way. Whatever it is you're doing, it's working. So, so I have no context for any of this, but it's been sweeping the internet. It's all over the place. There's memes. There's this video that I've I, seen 50 times. I was waiting. I was waiting for a punchline. I was waiting for him to say, like, this is what you've done. Nothing with your lives. I <laughs> saved you. Like, I was waiting for all of that. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just a nice message. Um, it didn't hit me the same way it hit a lot of people because, again, I just had no reference point. But I will see. Him telling me I look good every time makes me feel kind of good about myself. Every Don't know fucking why. morning. Yeah, you know, like you know, you ever hear the term like that? That coach will make me put a head, through, uh, put my head through a brick wall. He, him telling me I look good every morning, 
man, it'll make me like fucking take over the day. Like, I'll He'll command the day. Fucking clues. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, I'll the, fucking the part find where the he, he says, like, oh, you've done so much and accomplished so much in that time. There's the guilt inside me just swells up. And I'm <laughs> like, but I, I have let this. you down. I'm such a disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. I know you feel it. And I don't even know the guy. Mm. So. <laughs> Um, that was it. We had a great interview today, great show, lots of stuff. My God, when football hits, there's so many things to talk about at all times. Um, Terry, thank you for everything you've done today. Uh, for those who have joined up with Hot Streak, thank you for doing that. They're a great sponsor. Uh, they're a sponsor that we are actual partners with. Like we're we're involved with them. We invested with them. Uh, we're betting on their site since day one. We love it. Yeah, get um, it. We're betting on their site. Yeah. We are. Hey, uh, we literally are. Um, it's it's the most fun I've had uh, in all the different types of ways that I gamble on sports. It's the one I enjoy the most. Um, so do use our promo code. Uh, number two, hot, watch. Hot sauce. Yeah, hot sauce is a promo code. Uh, I should probably say it when I tell people to use it, right? Um, but yeah, do follow us. Do um, you know get get all the notifications about our podcast. Uh, do subscribe. Do like all the things you got to do. Uh, we do appreciate it, um, much like Steve from Blues Blues. Uh, so thank him for that message. Eagle, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, thank you to Stefano Giliati for joining us on this today's show. And thank you all for letting me be myself. You've been listening to Hot Sauce Sports.